Yo, we up in here. Jungle beats, baby. Jungle motherfucking beats. You know how we haven't li- we've listened to this. We haven't listened to everybody yet. We haven't listened to Logic. I haven't even, I haven't even listened to the singles. I listened to the Spider-Man one, the title track, and I, the other one it dropped. I haven't listened to any. I haven't listened to any. I ain't watched no videos. Um, but the concept is fascinating. I was watching some interviews with Logic, the ones mm-hmm. that I could. Um, oh, hold up, real quick. Instagram and Twitter. Jungle Beats, follow us there and support us on Patreon. Mm-hmm. If you want to see us uh, continue to grow. That's it's crazy true. in the warehouse, baby. Yeah. Um, we double Alex in this bitch. So Neil deGrasse Tyson's on this album. Mm-hmm. He plays the, the science perspective guy. of God on this, uh, this album. Didn't know that. Um, and every track... Hold up, every track. Imagine being asked that. I'd be like, hey, can you be God on my album? How would you say no? <laughs> Every track that is not talking about himself, like talking about Logic, mm-hmm. has Logic rapping from a perspective, uh, a different perspective um, that will eventually pick up on the concept that I don't want to spoil the concept too much. But mm-hmm. he's talked about it before the album released. Mm-hmm. He says there hasn't been an album like this before and the album is less about himself, more about other people's struggle. The, the most selfless album with the exception of talking about, you know, his relationship with being mixed race. Mm-hmm. And it all leads up to the end track, Africanarian, which was going to be with J Cole. I don't know, but that was going to be the the. I heard there was a big, I heard there was a big feature on it. So okay, I could go on, but I'll interject every now and again on a little more snippets we have about the album info. I've held off a lot, and I'm a big Logic fan, so I do this Where for indeed. you guys. You guys better appreciate this shit. Yeah, man, for real. The amount of times like a song would come on and be like, you gotta skip this shit, I can't listen to it. And 100%. they'd be like, dude, wait, what, how's one track gonna hurt you? Like, it'll hurt. It'll hurt. It'll hurt the experience. It'll hurt the experience, 100%, because this mm-hmm. is a story. Music is a story. It's storytelling. It's it, it's an art piece. Hunted. Can't spoil it. You gotta have it as all one collective um, experience. I was up late and up balling. For track one, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tyson, as I said before, plays God. Adam is killed in a car accident. Sounds like he got I hit by a car. I kind of like how you use the word Adam as well, like Adam, the first humans. I don't think it's... Oh, hold up. You got it, Scotty? Yeah, Scotty's got it. Yo, who did? Yo, no for Who did? Man, like, that was good. The production, that was... Woo, yeah, boy. The production was so beautiful. Like, in the way it switched, like, the guitar, and just the way that he wrote that outro out as well. What? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was imagining. It's not Adam, it's A T B. Okay, it's it's, 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 it's it's supposed to be like Adam and Eve and also like the space, right? The space thing as well, yeah. Adam's yeah. a little bit more than that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a double. Yeah, that's a great point. For those who can't hear Scott, his name is Atom. As I'm sure you guys kind of yeah, figured it out yeah. by now. We're just figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pretty impressed so far. Like we have heard there's a bit of spoken word in here, so I'm excited to see how he uses that because I have heard some people say it's like, you know, for the, the, some of the productions out it's beautiful and that it's kind of wasted, but I don't, I'm not looking that way. I'm here, I'm here with a clean slate, you know, whatever you. it is. We got pizza, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but that was a great, great opener. I fucking love that. That was a real beautiful opener. And I'm happy to hear that storytelling. I love how Logic is able to tell mm-hmm. a story through mm-hmm. his music in that narrative spoken word. Yo, yo, yo. I really look forward to continuing to listen and eat this pizza. Yeah, let's have some pizza and let's continue to listen. <laughs> Oh, track two, everybody. What 
was really oh, I, I love um, basically obviously trying to story tell that we all bleed we all breathe we all shit we all drink you know essentially we're all the same beings underneath our DNA DNA um, my favorite line right here in my blood is the slave and the master. It's like the devil playing spades with the pastor. But he was born with, with the white privilege, man. What the fuck is that? Because obviously um, he's mixed race. He's uh, mm -hmm. biracial, which is very interesting. Slave and the master. Yeah. So for those who can't hear, um, Scott was saying essentially because he's white because people look at him they don't assume he's African American or he has the use of a mixed race and this is why I've heard um, a lot of African excuse me African Americans they got an issue with logic claiming and talking from this perspective saying mm -hmm. the N word um, because man you don't you don't face the superficial problems that we face today because your skin color is on the white side not on the darker side a few and, and other rappers have this problem as well like. Alex Wiley's half mixed race as well, and he drops the end bomb in a lot of his songs. And because he's not on a huge scale yet, but like, you know, he's not getting too much slack for it, but he sticks by it at the moment. Right. And I, that's who he is. I, funnily enough, relate the same. Those who don't know, I'm, I'm mixed race as well. There you go. One of my mothers was, well, one of my mothers, <laughs> I only have one mother. Um, one of my, so I resonate with this whole message. Uh, mother was born uh, in Africa, in Egypt. My dad's family's from, from Greece. So it's that mixed race. I was born here. So it's mm -hmm. it, people, um, yeah, we, we can go on. We'll go on on a later date. But um, yeah, you want to say on that track anything? Um, so I was really enveloped my pizza. Yeah, that's so cool. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It slapped. That's what I got from it. Right. It was short though. Maybe because Hallelujah was so long. I like the transition too. Track three. Oh shit! Confess featuring Killer Mike. Ooh, Killer motherfucking Mike. Reminded me of the outro, kind of like who will survive in America because it had like the same sort of drums. And who will survive in America was spoken word. That was spoken word as well at the end. Was that um? Was that before? That was the final track on beautiful, my beautiful Doctor's Fancy. Wasn't Correct. It? Mm. But talking about confess. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're in church? You confess. Mm -hmm. People do. Um, to the priest. So I felt like that song right there was a confession of truth, of their truth, of Logic and mm -hmm. Killer Mike's truth. You well, know, that was Killer Mike in the end there. Yes. I was wondering where his verse was. I didn't even that realize was him. I didn't even realize it was Killer Mike. Man, I wanted to kill him like verse. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. Fair like, enough. Because Killer Mike's a great artist, great rapper. He's an amazing great, rapper. Great. Um, shit, I'm gonna have to go back and hear that one again. Are you not, are you not, I was really trying to listen to what Killer Mike was saying. You're not particularly religious, are you? Uh, I come from a very religious background. Mm -hmm. I've kind of formed my own beliefs and they're not, I don't know, like, I feel like that, I feel like I'm, I'm religious, but I just feel like it's just not a religion that people know of. It's just something that I just, just believe in. Okay, that sounds very ambiguous. It's more just like I've just over the time of what I've experienced, what I've seen, I've just formed my own beliefs. Okay. That are just different to everyone else's. Um, 
Because that conversation at the end, Killer Mike was having with himself, he's like, if you're there, God, reveal yourself, reveal yourself. Like, I feel like so many people who had that, some variation of that conversation. Oh, definitely. When shit like, hits the fan. Exactly. You have so much happen in your life to be like, where's God when I've needed him? He hasn't right. answered. Right. Give me a sign that you're real. Then I'll, my faith will be restored. I'll continue to understand and do all this shit. But like, so I can see, I, I de- I've definitely been that in my in very yeah, early same, in my life. Because when your same. parents are pushing it on you. Right. And you're surrounding yourself around people 24 seven that believe in the same thing. And you're sitting there going, I don't feel anything. How are these people feeling something when I feel absolutely nothing? And you just constantly challenge yourself and ask for signs. And I got given signs and I, and I just chose to like still go my own way. Purely because of what I see in this world. You have to. You have yeah. to go your own way. I believe in myself. I believe in people. I don't believe in an higher thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I legit was like, I was given like many signs of like there being a God and I just mm-hmm. chose to disregard it because I just chose people. Over so that was your variation of that conversation Killer Mike had. And yeah. I'm sure every single one of our viewers or yep. nearly all of them have had some variation of that conversation. They've either gone in one direction or the other. Yeah. Belief or different belief well, or no belief. I've seen people have things happen to them very godlike, and then they will just change them so much to the point where you're right, they get those two paths. And if they do choose that godly path, as good as it could be for them. Like, I just feel like living solely for something greater compared to everything else can like, I just feel like it's, I don't know. I just, I just don't, I'm not a big fan. It of doesn't it. resonate with you. It doesn't resonate with me. Okay. We don't need to have this whole video about, about oh, religion. Oh, hell no, hell no. But it's an important foundation of, of, of this music album. And this album. The story and Logic's beliefs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Track four, Killing Spree featuring Ansel Elgo. Let's get it. I love the killing spree All the things they put in me to be It's everything that I like That's leading into, oh, I love that instrument on the next track. I know, because the, in the trailer for everybody, he had that instrumental and the oh, instrumental fucking bangs. That was a while ago, I heard it. Dude, that shit bangs. Killing spree, <laughs> yeah. Ass, t- pussy, ass titties, pussy, pussy money, money, weed. weed. Everything uh, they wanted me to be. Yo, we only heard it once, man. <laughs> That's a dope song. Woo! It bangs and um, yeah, Logic really impressing so far. I'm. I think there's definitely an album that I'm gonna have to listen to a lot to really yeah. understand the deep message. But for now, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy it. Okay. And so far, I'm enjoying. Same. Um. <laughs> Production's fucking fire. Oh, the instrumentals just mental. Uh, too much spoken word. Imagine if you took everything you said in those last three minutes and changed it into a verse. So you think you should have been more creative with it and just turn that all into? But he is doing it anyway. He said that in different forms. I feel like he's being lazy, honestly. I don't mean to be coming out of logic or anything, but I feel That's like because the very end of that when the music was cut. I feel like that was good, but everything before that, why didn't he just make it into a verse? He had a huge amount of content to work with, huge amount of stuff to do Fair more point. artistry with, Fair point. do a bit more with. I, I get that he's trying to come across with that storytelling sort of vibe. So you're sort of paying attention more. You don't have to try and you know think about too much, but I feel like as an artist, that's your job to be a bit more creative, to try and make people think more. So just, I don't know, I see what he's doing. But we can't, de- we can't f- define how they're going to be creative. We can only judge them mm. on our own subjectivity. And but biases. still really interesting. He's saying a lot. He is. Definitely. Like how he's pulled in either a direction of like black folk uh, treating him like he's 
like a racist because they, they, they don't know he's mixed or treat him in a racist way because they, they don't know he's mixed. White people treat him with racism when they find out he's half black. So mm-hmm. he, he doesn't fit in either way is what that sounds like. Mm, and also just being like people always like, you look from the outside, but they don't see the inside. They ain't seen the narcotics going on my head. They ain't seen like the right. shit going on with my family. They just they just judge me because of the color of my skin. They, right. they ain't seen everything else that's going on. Right. Because those are those are very real problems that have shaped him today. Mm. Very real problems that um, not do, many people experience. And I do feel like he has kept a lot of it in because of because of the color of his skin. I feel like this is the album where he's like, you know what, fuck it. People probably gonna judge me on this shit, but I just want to get this shit out. Yeah, and and that's completely fair. Mm. It, used to, it was going to be called Afri- African Aryan um, to display those two sides. Mm-hmm. Next track. Yes. America featuring Black Thought. Ooh, let's go. And Chuck D. Woo. And Big Lambo. Damn. And No ID. <laughs> Bitch. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I wasn't the biggest fan. Nah. I thought the hook was just, what? Come hook on. was hook was average. Production was hook production was only good. really got good with the switch up. Yeah, when you when you came in with the verse, it was, it was very old. It, it definitely suited uh, Black Thought. I thought Black Thought was the best feature on that track. I thought he did really well. It suited it perfectly. Uh, Logic, Big Lembo, no idea. Didn't really. This, the verses were really short. It, uh, like. Uh, I know No Idea hasn't been a track for ages, but it was nothing special. Honestly, you didn't really need to be on there. Big Limbo didn't need to be on there. It's it's a parody track. What do you mean? It's a parody of like 90 factors. Like people talking shit, basically. That was like the, the I, oh, that's that's like, idea. Why, so that's no why, idea and Big Limbo were the parody rappers. Uh, well, like Logic and yeah. Well, so they, 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 uh, No Idea was not a parody rapper. He's a person about uh, the whole idea of sending immigrants home when everyone apart from Native Americans are immigrants. So all it is is sending the blacks back to Africa, um, send the whites back to Europe, send the, um, like, send them back to Mexico and like live the land back to the Native Americans. That's all I did. But that is apparently based on this logic is parody in a 90s. It should be, should be logic based on black law because the other two didn't even deserve to be called a feature. Incredible. I heard that when you picks up. Um, I'll take it from the camera, hopefully. Uh, but if that's true, then mm-hmm. that's good. That means he's rapping from, Logic wants to rap yeah. from all perspectives and this is one of them. Oh yeah, very creative in that, in that sense of form. Uh, next track. Next track, Ink Blot featuring Juicy J. He I'll was say, on the cover. Juicy J's on the cover. Did you say Ink Bluff? Ink Blot. <laughs> That's my favorite track so far. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's probably my favorite track so far. And I lo- no. What? Your favorite track? Definitely. Your favorite track? Yeah, for real. Why? I just like the way the production built up. I like the way that he sung the hook and then when he sort of stopped, came in and then just the way that Juicy J came in over the top of his voice and just laid back and forth. Mm. Just to finish, it was Short, simple, in terms of production and using the beat and the vocals and just everything like in total, probably message wise, not the best, but in terms of just like a song, it was my favorite so far. And he didn't overdo the feature, right? Oh, the feature was beautiful. It was just Juicy enough. J, I never would have thought I'd hear the day where Juicy J was on a Logic track and rapping like that. Right, but it worked. It worked really good. I was I a big fan. Enjoy that too. Next track, most definitely with, um, with no T. With who? We, sorry. No takes. I was like most deaf. Oh, uh, sorry. I feel, I feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. Yeah, I read there the end. The, the the chant at the end of the song is actually a chant from a uh, track Umi says by Mo's Death in 1999. So a bit of an ode to him, and also. Uh, in interviews, it's been said that um, most, like when asked, like who is your biggest inspiration? Normally, the reply is Mo's death. As That's the yeah, one. as logics, yeah. I don't think, I don't think necessarily in terms of technique could be technique, but I think in terms of what he brings to the to what he's talking about on this album specifically is something that Mo's death has sort of tackled. Like Black on Both Sides was a very very big album, and so him. I think it's going to be a bit weird for people to see Logic visually and then see. Black people. Why is he talking about this? But like, like people who aren't looking deeper into it, they'll be mm-hmm. a little confused. Why is he talking about this? He's white. But again, it's another perspective. There's so many people who are really proud of their race, their color, their creed, um, and voice it uh, loudly. And I think this is represents them. Mm. I feel you, man. What? <laughs> Um, I got a bit lost to the bit though. The beat really didn't pick up too much. Next track, Waiting Room. <laughs> Come on, you mean it. That's what I want to call it. Either this is what it is or this is what it ain't. Sure. I don't understand. I created this place for you, Adam. This entire place was made for you. Every time I send you back, every life you live, you grow and mature and understand the grand meaning behind all of this. Shit. That's one hell of a concept. That's one hell of a waiting room. <sighs> Imagine f- finding out that you were every, I'm you, I'm Scott, I'm everybody. I'm everyone that ever lived. And you, every time you die, you go back and live one of those lives until you've lived every single one of those lives. I've heard this, I've heard this, well, not this exact concept before, but I've heard people that believe in us all being connected as like one huge, one huge being. We're all just like, we're all part of each other. All interconnected in some yeah. subconscious way. But I've never heard it worded like this before. And I don't think, I don't know if logic bleeds. I think this is just his concept. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. I'm really digging it. That was, that was, that's a really cool concept. When I heard him articulate it in an interview um, a couple of weeks back, uh, mm. it was fascinating to me. I'm like, wow, that's, that's a really dope concept. Like you have to live the life of everybody. And that's why his name is Adam because Adams um, like, are these are the- It's everything. They make up everything. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, it's real fucking dope. And so that's the main concept of the album that I was going to mention at the start, but didn't want to spoil it. Everybody. There you go. And that's why it's called Everybody. And Logic is rapping from everybody's perspective. So if you see the songs, he has to rap from everybody's perspective and then we'll get to the end and we'll see what it is. he is everybody, yeah. Well, I'm I'm excited to see what Neil deGrasse Tyson does next with Adam, so. The next song is 1-800-273-8255. This is one of the, the, the singles he put out. Yes, Suicide Hotline. Featuring Alicia. Alessia. Alessia, Cara. thank you. Alessia Cara. And Ooh, that's good. And Khaled. Scott Scott. Scott Scott. That's a pretty good track. Yeah, man. It was a really cool track. It's, it speaks to another collective of people. Mm, love the switch up. Love the message. Yeah. Uh, love his vocals. Production is really smooth. Yeah, beautiful track. Agreed, 100%. Not much needs to be said on it. Yeah. Just another perspective. I thought from the first few bars, like, I'm probably not going to like this because it wasn't my style, but the more I listened to it, the more I understood, the more I dug it. And he was singing. Logic was singing on that. Oh, that he was sing, good. Man. That he... wasn't bad. Oh, dude, he's always been able to sing. This is mixtape days. Always really? been able to sing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's the one, well, man. It's an awesome talent. You can combine that with your rapping ability. Oh yeah, that's a that's a holistic artist. Nah, beautiful song. Very happy with that one. Wait a second. Is this next track really a bunch of digits? No, it's anxiety feet Lucy Rose. I don't know why I don't have phone. It's the only time it's happened. But it's anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's thank you, thank you for the heads up. <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine if that was the title of the track. The next title of the track is 75138127875967569682. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anxiety, that's interesting. We talk about depression and suffering yeah. before, now we're going to anxiety. Okay, interesting. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Maybe she was the person the song was for? No, it's a song that's that's Lucy Rose. She's saying she's a female vocalist. The song is about he he um he talks he talks about him now, but he uh, there's a accompanying documentary that is part of the album that like it explains every song and it's like Killer Mike's there and Juicy J there and everyone who's involved. Like there's a lot of people that like Killer Mike's there and Juicy J there and everyone who's involved. Like talked about it, including Lucy Rose. And he, the take that she did on that was like her first take. So mm -hmm. she but it was like, the so whole idea is that he's like, I don't want you to go and learn the lyrics, I want you just to say it. So your first take is like as emotional as you want it, is it like it would have been, instead of becoming mechanical over time? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, he fainted, seeing Star Wars, he like passed out and woke up in a hospital bed because he had anxiety and he couldn't work out. Like he couldn't rectify. Yeah, he couldn't rectify what was happening, he was like, this can't be anxiety, like I physically can't operate. And he's like, yeah, it's because you have severe anxiety. That's what song's about. Huh. Once again, long spoken word, could have been a verse. <laughs> just gonna put it out there. He has so much content to work with and he just puts it forward plain and simple for the listener and a story. Con I mean, the beat did change up lighter for him to start the spoken word, but. There was four minutes 30 of rap and about a minute of spoken word. No, there was more than a minute of spoken word. There was oh, at least two. Maybe two minutes? Yeah, like it's, six, it's a seven minute song. Yeah. So maybe five minutes of rap. I don't care, man. He's, a, he's an artist, he's a rapper. Like if you're gonna give us two minutes of spoken word, turn it to a verse, be more creative with it. That's just my, this is my take on it personally. That's, that's fair, that's a fair opinion Like I have. still respect what he's doing here and I think that's it's a great message in the way he's gone. Yeah. Like, but I just think if you're gonna have that much content to put into that last spoken word, Put it to a verse. Be more creative. Do more with it. That's just that's just me. Because if I was an artist and I had that sort of experience, I'd want to push myself to put a good message out, but also push myself to be as creative as possible. And I don't think he. I, I think like the other track I heard before. I feel like that he's not pushing himself. I feel like he's. I feel, I, I don't know. I just feel like that what he's done, what he's doing with this album, with these end of spoken words. I feel like he's trying to just get his message to the listener in a way that he feels like they can just really understand. But I just I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. I mean, I'm big. I'm good. I'm a big fan of what I've heard so far. I just, I just feel like he could, he could have done more. That's what I'm trying to say. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said. What? Really? Second, second last track. How Black. Black. How Sorry, what? How many tracks? Fourteen. Album? Have we already gone through twelve tracks? God damn. Black Spider Man featuring Damon Lamar Hudson. This is uh, one of the singles. Ooh, I can watch to this. the video when I get home now. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Sapper. I wonder Not if you wrote that song before Black Spider Man comics were a thing. When were they a thing? Black Spider Man comics were a thing in 2000. And, well, when did Charles Gambino start? What do you mean? That's, that's the, that's the, that was the initial thing. It was when. Uh, uh, fuck, who was it? Not the current Spider Man, Spider -Man Andrew Garfield. Before Andrew Garfield was passed, they were like, the new Spider Man should be ethnic. And then, like, make sure black, Hispanic, or whatever. And then someone. Was it Charles Gambino? 
no, Masterclass was born in 2009, I think it was. But uh, the whole idea is like, oh, you like the TV version should be black, and they basically went, oh, you know, you should be black Hispanic, and then there was the whole thing was like, Donald Glover could be Spider-Man, he is nerdy. And then like, the whole idea, um, Donald Glover's all skilled, and he goes, he goes, do you yeah, know that's yeah, yeah. And just, just when he started, like, when the EP was dropped, that's when it happened. And then, then like, that's the whole thing. But yeah, Miles Morales is a black Spider-Man, I'm like, they never mentioned him, like, there is a black Spider-Man. Yeah, there is a black Spider-Man. Spider-Man. That's something about that song, like, I guess, I guess the best part of the movie that happened. It's on TV, there's no one in a new movie. But yeah. Um, well, the, the main, main, I don't know, the, the, the third, third Spider-Man has come, come out in space, space for one decade, decade, so... I don't I think we've ever seen Miles Morales for a while. Or oh, well, maybe... It's a TV show. What's that? It's a TV show. Miles Morales? Yeah. Do you know who voices him? Who? Donald Glover. Really? Yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man. Miles Morales. Didn't even know he had his own TV show. Either way, from what I've read, he's probably the most interesting one I've, I've read, yeah. I think Miles Morales is a wicked Spider-Man. And his powers are better as well. I'm a nerd, what can I say? No, man. Venom go. Blast, motherfucker. <laughs> so what did you get? Being a big fan of, of, of comic Spider-Man, what did you get from that? I'll be honest, I wasn't paying too much attention to the lyrics. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. There's a line. There's a line in every line of the song. It's like, uh, I don't care I'm black. I don't care I'm white. I don't, I don't care about my beautiful Mexican wife. <laughs> Matter of fact, I know you're fucking with that. Like, it's good. It's, yeah. I was just taken away. I, I just love soulful piano sort of beats like that. The beat was dope. I was digging it. It was hard to catch, man. He raps too fast. I know. Sometimes it's like Here real we fast. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. genius. Yeah, man. That's one of the dopest music videos I've seen all year. Really? What? You don't think that's one of the dopest? It was all right. I oh, thought like was dancing so f- was pretty cringy, honestly. Ah, there was the whole routine. You like the whole routine that... No, really. I like to start with the I like to start with like the the piano on the thing and him just strolling down the neighborhood. But as soon as it got to like the dancing part, it's too was, corny for you. Too corny for me. All right, man. The That's... ending was dope though. Yeah, and him just like going up to like people like, hey, how you doing? Oh, it's you like... thought that was very scripted. That probably would, yeah. It was a bit scripted for me. Like I would have liked to be like it just didn't like for how natural he was trying to make it come off as. It just didn't seem very natural. I, I feel you. I feel you. It's still a great video though. I like, don't get me wrong. Track 13, African Aryan featuring Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sit back, relax, get your popcorn, kids. Ooh, we're going to be, be here oh, that's for right, a while. Gonna finish it off. I like how he's been... Incredible True Story. Do you remember when we listened to Incredible True Story for the yeah. first time? The info, I remember the, the last track, how like blown away we were after listening to the entire album. The last track, the outro was amazing. Yeah, same, same feeling. All right, let's go. Do you reckon Logic played him that track and J. Cole was so inspired that he just sent him I that think J. Phone? Cole. I think he played him the album and J. Cole gave him his perspective. Do you mean how it actually happened? Not yet. Not, just let us vibe off it for a sec. Um, 
So you reckon that like, so like Logic would have got the album, or Logic would have given the album, and he would have been like, "Yo, this is this is my not like like my interpretation. This is just how I feel on it. And this is what I got to say about what I, what you've t- what you've been speaking." Right, speaking and his about. own lessons of like his own life of like this is how you know mm. this is what I think about it all. Because I know he referenced Logic's name a couple of times and referenced his kind of idea and this mm. concept. But well, they both they both have gone through the same sort of shit. Right. Are both biracial, mixed exactly. race, parents, different colors. Mm-hmm. But um, we go back a little bit through the song. Uh, towards the end of the song, um, we go back to the incredible true story. Exactly. The two characters, Kai and um, other dude's name. Yeah. They, um, yeah, it goes back to them. They're just trudging along like, cool. This is like before the fourth album, which is his last album. And I'm a firm believer that when an artist says it's their last album, it's not their last album. There's nothing worse than to me when an artist releases an album when they've run out of things to say. You can <laughs> cough, tell. Jay-Z, Magna Holy Gale. <laughs> cough. Fuck, fuck, I was listening to that shit on the way here and that Yo. was bumping. Yeah, but That's the a beats, good album. It's a good album, but he there's not, like there are tracks where he's saying things, but there's a lot of filler in terms of what he's talking about. It's just luxury rap. No, not, it's not a luxury rap. He talks about how he's, how, how he's dealing with now fame and the fame with now his daughter, his new, new daughter, Blue Ivy, into the world, maneuvering around. Okay, there's probably some tracks like that. Yeah, sure. But, you know, there's some concepts there, you know, maneuvering around fame and money and like the world and chaos around him and how, I don't know, put this in, but, and then how to maneuver around that with his new daughter in the world. You know, will I be a good enough father for her? My, my father, he reflects on how his father, um, I can't remember exactly what happened, but he reflects on his own father's uh, trials and tribulations and then uses it in a mirror to reflect on himself. Do you, did you remember ever hearing that? I do remember hearing that, but I also do remember hearing a lot of tracks when it has been mentioned in the same thing. Okay. I still, I still remember, if someone asked me who's the greatest rapper of life, I'll say Jay-Z. Oh, that's, that's why I strongly believe he's the greatest rapper of life. I don't think I've ever, ever asked that. I just think in terms of what a rapper's done for hip hop and is still prominent in hip hop, it's just second ever game. Third uh, and I'm sure that's been an influence of logic. If we go back to him rounding out the album, he said it's going to be his last album, the next one. But I, I love the concept of how it's all meant to connect. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they came in, they were like, what? Just keep, just tie that back in. So I'm pretty sure of logic saying that he wants the fourth album to sort of be like a sequel to. The incredible true stories is gonna have those characters probably a lot more in there again as well. And then if we look at how like that's there in like the future, and you look in the middle of the cover, there's the robot. Is that the same robot from the incredible true story? Sally Alice. Yeah. Sally Alice, yeah, Sally Alice. So Sally Alice and the year two guys are next. Right, and in an interview I watched, Logic said that robot on the cover is a mascot and symbol for the internet artificial intelligence which is the direction we're going and he feels that's kind of the closest thing um to uh, uh, humans or uh, emotion or something along those lines i can't don't quote me on that last bit Hmm. but it's there for a reason this album's gonna need a lot of listens for me i'm definitely when i get home after work tonight i'm gonna pull out the lyrics have a good fucking listen and just try and dig into it a lot more and get my own take on it yeah because you can always read about it, but when, the more you read about things, the less you're going to form your own opinion on it. So, right. It was a good album. Quality cool um, album. From a first listen perspective, I still think Under Pressure is his best. Incredible Pusher Story is his second. This is still a good album, but I think it's a bit more. To, to me, it's a little like Lost in the was last two. But still, it's good. But this is just strictly a first, a first listen for this. That's correct. That's just how I feel. I'm a fan of this album. I, can't, I love the concept behind it. I can't wait to the listen to it more. And listen to that documentary behind it. Mm-hmm. And watch all the interviews of him explaining the tracks, which I'm going to send you, because I was holding up and watching them, because he explains Black Spider Man, he explains this and that, so oh, yeah. we get a bigger picture. When you hear an explanation from the artist themselves, know exactly where they come from. So you can always take a track from the way you take it, but when you know where how the artist takes it, that's how it's intended to be heard. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different world that you do it. 100%. All right. But done, Jungle Beats. Yo, Logic, everybody, finally motherfucking got to it. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Gonna be listening to it more. More coming at you. Glad to be back up over here. Yes, bitch. Fuck with it. Uh, hit us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, just look up type in Jungle Beats and you'll find us. Yeah. Support us on Patreon if you can. We just need like 1% of our audience to support us. And we'll be able to cover this rent between the two of us, the 800 something dollars between the two of us for now. Appreciate the love, appreciate the support. We'll be up there, we're just gonna put it below me to make it look like a fucking idiot. There we go.
tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. I feel like the grass is green. And everything I do.